Sinotype History and Methods. Sinotype, sometimes called blueprints, were invented in 1842 by John Herschel, a chemist, astronomer, and photographer. Herschel developed the process to make reproductions of a drawing on semi-transparent paper, which he contact printed with another sheet of paper coated with a photosensitive chemical mixture of potassium ferrocyanide and ferric ammonium citrate. When exposed to light, the chemically treated paper turned blue, while the drawn lines on the transparent paper blocked the coated paper from exposure and remained white. This process eliminated the time and expense of hand tracing original drawings and was soon adopted by architectural offices to make copies of building designs. Here we can see an architectural blueprint of a residence from 1902. Using Sinotype, Anna Atkins is credited with making the first book to be illustrated with photographs and the first substantial application of photography to science in her book, Photographs of British Algae, Sinotype Impressions. Atkins' work was the subject of an exhibition titled Blueprints, the Pioneering Photographs of Anna Atkins at the New York Public Library in 2018 and 2019. Here we see an installation view from that exhibit to get a sense of how she utilized the cyanotypes as part of her book publication. And here's an example from her British Algae book from 1849 and 50, and a later blueprint uh, depicting a peacock feather. Today, many artists use cyanotype, and it would be the subject of an entirely different lecture but I did want to show this work by Hannah Schoonberg, Window Wall, uh, which used cyanotype applied to Venetian blinds. Hi, this is Bove Lyons. Today I'm going to introduce some of the supplies we, would, we will be using for the Printmaking Without a Press cyanotype book project. Um, oftentimes, if we're doing cyanotypes in the studio for face-to-face -face experiences, We'll use a kit from Photographer's Formulary. Um, this, uh, I'll include this information at the end of the presentation if you're interested in following up in the future with Cyanotype. Uh, this kit um, involves uh, receiving two different solutions that when you mix together will have a limited shelf life and then you can apply them with a brush or a sponge brush to an absorbent material like paper or fabric, let it dry, and then expose it uh, in the way that we'll do for this project. Um, to simplify things for our uh, Cenotype book project, we're gonna use a kit that's in your supply box, um, a Sunprint kit. And this has a series of 12 um, pre-coated sheets of Cenotype paper. But uh, let me just introduce some of the things you need to do before you uh, make your Cenotypes. Um, for the theme of this project, we're juxtaposing ideas of raw and cooked or uh, nature and culture. So um, uh, for your natural elements, you can choose any number of things um, uh, to represent them. Um, they typically, uh, quite effective, are using things like, I have some rosemary sprigs here, um, and uh, you'll need something that can lie flat against the paper because this is basically a method that's a contact printing method. You could also uh, select items uh, that uh, you find in your environment that are more um, of the cultural symbols, like you know, rubber bands, uh, things with um, rather distinctive silhouettes like a uh, utility blade, paper clips, um, you'll even find things that are translucent, can cast shadows and produce some interesting results. Um, so those are all things to gather up and think about and think about how you might use. In addition, you can create um, a transparency. And so you can have these made at FedEx Kinko's or you may have some of this kind of material for making transparencies you can get at an office supply store. Um, you could also take a transparent material like uh, a bread bag or something like that and cut those up. 
You can scotch tape things together to uh, make your pot, your transparencies. Now, um, I've done a couple things in making this. Um, I took a topographic map of Knoxville and uh, I printed it out a couple different ways. Uh, but one thing that's important is I took the image in Photoshop and I flipped it horizontal. Uh, and the reason for this is when we're looking at this here, the um, laser printed um, toner is on the front face of it. And the reason I made it flipped it horizontal is because when this is printed on a transparency, when that uh, toner goes face down onto the, um, when it goes face down onto it, you'll see that it, it reads right reading, right? So that way we don't even have the thickness of the film getting in the way of the exposure. Um, so as the light exposes to it, it can tend to undercut on whatever is your transparency. The other thing is, is that um, it will make an inversion of the image. So my original files were um, um, like this, and what I did is I inverted them in Photoshop so that what was black becomes white and what was white becomes black. Um, so if I want it to look like the roads and so forth in Knoxville are white on a blue background, like a blueprint, which this is, I would use this set of transparencies. If I wanted the roads to be blue with the background white, I would use the negative set of transparencies. So think about uh, the different elements you'll use, um, uh, compose them in various ways before you ever get to the stage of actually doing the exposures. So here I have some of the supplies I'll use. There's the sun print kit, and inside of it is a piece of acrylic that had, um, a white plastic cover. You'll need to remove those. Um, I've also made another piece of acrylic. It's good to have a piece of map board or cardboard. I've got some binder clips should I need them. Um, I'm gonna uh, start by just um, showing you a basic way of doing this um, uh, without necessarily using any acrylic. And the, uh, you have to act pretty quickly. This material is in here in a, um, a black plastic bag. So you're gonna pull it out, close that plastic bag right away and put that down. And then in this case, I'm gonna use my Knoxville diagram map. Put that on there, leave it in a single place without letting it move and put your acrylic on top of it. And then you'll need to wait um, um, at least one minute preferably around um, up to three minutes, depending upon the light condition. So I have the sun coming from the side here, and uh, we'll watch this a little bit um, as it makes that exposure. While I'm doing this, I can also set up a simultaneous exposure using just the, now it's an issue with wind. So if you have a windy day, you'll run into some issues. I'm gonna pull another piece out, close with this up, and I'm gonna lay some of the some of the herb on here. I would try not to manage more than two exposures at a time. So um, in this one, we have Rosemary and this one, the map of Knoxville. Some other things um, I could use, seeing how they cast shadows are things like binder clips, right? Um, I've got a variety of things from nails to other things here. And you're gonna see the um, cyanotype paper slightly change here as this happens. It'll get a little bit lighter. I'm gonna put my 
black plastic packet away here in this container to keep it out of the light. You want to be careful not to overexpose it. I've got a book that I brought along that I can use because I might not be right next to the sink where I'm going to develop this. Um, uh, I brought a book along so after the exposure is done I can slip the sheets into pages of the book. You can see it's starting to get a little bit lighter here in the map as well as the other one. So at this point, I'm gonna complete this, remove this quickly. You'll see a little bit of the ghost image, close up the book. I'm gonna give this one just a hint more time. There will be some reflected light that will come into the shadow areas. I'm gonna pull this one, you can see that's there as well. So by putting these in the book, I can keep them out of the way. So there's any number of things you can develop your cyanotype in. I've got a small a Ziploc um, uh, container, plastic container. You could use a uh, Tupperware pan, uh, something like that. Um, anything that'll hold the water to about a one inch depth or so. So I'm gonna take one of my cyanotypes and slip this into the water and agitate it back and forth. And what will happen is, is the unexposed areas of the cyanotype solution will start to dissolve in the water. And I'm basically using cool water here. you want, you can uh, pour that water out and wash it again with a little more water under a kitchen sink or something like that. Every time you develop, you'll want to use some fresh water. One little trick is if you want to intensify the blue, you can just use a little bit especially in a small quantity like this, like a quarter cap full of hydrogen peroxide, maybe a touch more, it's working throughout it there. And that will really intensify your blue in the cyanotype. So you can see the way that really brings out the blues in this. You can get hydrogen peroxide in any grocery store or um, pharmacy. So it's about a dollar a bottle. So now I will rinse this out. And then what I suggest you do with this is using your uh, Lexan that comes with your supply kit, you wanna get this to dry flat. So um, remove it from this and lay it on a surface like the Lexan and because it attached sticks to it a little bit this will help that dry flat. Here are two sources for supplies for the work I'm showing in this presentation. Sunprint kits through UC Berkeley as well as photographer's formulary where you can get uh, supplies for a whole variety of different non-silver photographic methods. I hope you enjoyed this talk and found it useful.